In this video, we're going to learn how to route Streamflow with the Muskeka method. This is slightly different than the last video that you may have watched, was, which was the level pool method. So this level pool method is more appropriate for reservoirs or lakes. In this case, we have um, flow in a river. So this is a map. Sorry, my drawing is not so great today. But we have a, a stream flowing um, in a river. We have an input to this channel. Uh, and we have an output to the, from this channel. And so what we're trying to solve for fundamentally is this Q and how this Q or stream flow changes uh, through time. In the Muskeka method, we're assuming that we don't just have a level pool. We actually have, and this is a, a cross section here, we have a, what's called wedge storage, which is above the level pool storage. And again, we have this input function I uh, to this reach of the stream uh, and an output that we're trying to solve for Q in the next time step. So uh, some other kind of input variables that we have for this calculation are the, the, the stream flow input through time. So this is this I in cubic uh, feet per second um, at different, different hours, which is um, shown as a subscript J here, hour one, two, three, and four. And those have different measured um, inflows to the stream and we're trying to calculate the outflow in these different hours. We also know some of these characteristics uh, of the, the stream. The first is um, this big K which is not hydraulic conductivity. It's a coefficient that approximates the travel time in the river. This X here is a, basically a weighting factor which shows um, for this stream the importance of this um, wedge storage. We have a time step of um, one hour and a, a Q1 of uh, a Q out uh, a Q1, so our initial um, stream flow uh, output of 85 CFS. So in class, we derived this overall equation for river routing using the Muskeka method. So the, what we're solving for again is this Q at the next time step, J plus one. And this is a function of these coefficients here, C1, C2, and C3, as well as the um, input uh, function at the next time step, the input function at the current time step, IJ, and the QJ, um, the output of the current time step. So we uh, first have to calculate each of these coefficients, and you'll see each of these coefficients have a denominator of d. So this is d, so that's the first uh, important thing to calculate, and all of these c1, c2, c3 are all, all use these input parameters of k, x, and delta t in different ways. So first, uh, solving for um, a d for all of the other coefficients, we have uh, d is equal to 2k, where k is this 2.3 hours, so 2 times 2.3 hours, um, multiplied by 1 minus um, 0 0.15, plus our delta t of 1 hour. And so what that results in is um, 4.91, so that's our d value that we use in all of the other calculations. All right, so I have just advanced our calculations slightly. We've already calculated this d, and here I've calculated each of these other coefficients, c1, c2, c3, which are equal to 0 0.0631, 0 0.3442, and 0 0.0527 all respectively. And so now we can substitute all of those into our um, Muskeka method equation for um, the time step Q2. So our Q2 is equal to C1 I2, C2 I1, C3 Q1, which when we substitute these coefficients and um, the, um, uh, the stream flows themselves it is equal to 91 CFS. So now we've been able to calculate both the river routing and level pool routing in these two videos.